move on to this part which is traffic flow model and capacity this is basically the beginning of the roadway design because the road as we know the primary objective for design of the roads is to provide a proper space through which the vehicles can move on so the first thing that we must have to learn is how much space is required and secondly by mentioning the proper movement of the vehicle what actually is being really being focused upon and thus these are actually the two major things that we need to focus upon that is what should be the size of the road or how much should be the space in order to allow safe movement safe and desired movement of the vehicle and regarding that desired movement of the vehicle that desire is normally being measured in terms of the most common target of movement is reaching from one point to another point within a particular time and in order to reach from one point to another point within a particular time what need to be maintained is a proper speed what need to be maintained is proper speed because speed ultimately will decide upon the time so every vehicle has a tendency or the desire that there should be adequate space on the road for their safe movement and the road should be designed in such a way that they can drive at adequate speed and reach the destination within a desired time and the space that is need to be designed as the road geometry as the space for the vehicles is known as the carriageway the space on the road over which the vehicles move and for this what actually is being found out is the vehicles move along a stream so on the longitudinal direction there is no such thing that need to be designed but what required to be designed is in the lateral direction that is if the vehicles want to travel in uh, one particular direction then the vehicles will actually move from say on left of the screen to the right of the screen and for this movement they will actually move they normally they should move like a stream a linear stream and thus for a movement of a linear stream we require a minimum transverse space and this transverse space is called as the lane this space is called as the lane and so a lane is a space through which one stream of vehicles can move safely and thus what happens over a unit length of the roadway that is if we consider that from this particular point to this particular point is a unit length of the roadway so depending upon the speed of the vehicles and safety aspect there can be a maximum number of vehicles that can be accommodated within this space that is within a length over one lane because we can only have
one after one after another vehicle like this along a lane one after another vehicle can move on and thus and this gap between the vehicles we know that very obviously these are nothing related to mathematics or engineering or anything we know that one of the major parameter that will influence this gap is the speed when the drivers move at a very high speed in order to maintain their own safety drivers have a tendency to keep large or longer gap along with the forwarding vehicle if they move at a slower speed they can keep a smaller gap and as we have mentioned speed is one of the desirable parameter so obviously in connection with that this gap between the vehicles also become a desirable parameter and based upon this gap need to be provided between the vehicles at unit time at their particular speed only a certain number of vehicles can at any instant of time only a certain number of vehicles can be accommodated over unit length and in unit time only a certain number of vehicles can cross over this unit length no vehicle more than that count can cross over if there are vehicles more than to that count so what happens the vehicles will be coming more close to each other that is here on example we have drawn four vehicles if we insert a fifth vehicle here that means the gap which was there in between this third and this fifth vehicle has now reduced so very obviously in order to maintain the speed the third vehicle in order to maintain the safety sorry the third vehicle will reduce its speed so that this redu reduction in the separation distance also remains in the safe side so with increase in number of vehicles either the speed gets compromised or safety gets compromised and if we do not want to compromise any particular of these aspects what we need to do we need to make an additional space for movement of the vehicle so there is an alternative that we add on another lane besides this and with that we can ask certain vehicles of this lane to move on to the second lane so that the higher speed at which the vehicles has a tendency to move on that also maintained at the same time the vehicles can also have the safety thus for a particular speed driving at a particular speed and maintaining a particular safety there can be only a certain maximum fixed number of vehicle if the if this suppose this fixed number of vehicle is three vehicles can move over this unit length in unit time such that they can maintain a desired speed as well as they remain safe so as soon as we have a fourth vehicle so obviously the safety gets compromised or we cannot do it we cannot compromise on the safety so what we do we can we we might make a change in the speed and we lower down the speed and thus when we lower down the speed then it is absolutely a change scenario so in order to drive at the same speed at the same safety level how we can do that since they are at that particular speed that particular safety level only three vehicles can be accommodated so if we have five vehicle we cannot accommodate them in that space so we must have to provide an extra space this is similar to suppose we have a water bottle of 500 ml capacity you cannot put on 700 ml water in that if you put 700 ml water in that it will spill over and it will destroy the whole functionality so the only possible way is bring another water bottle here also in road design this only possible way is add, add another lane and thus from this aspect 
considering the capacity which is the maximum number of vehicles or the ability of, to cater the maximum number of vehicles with a particular desired speed and safety parameter. So keeping in mind the capacity, our aim is to find out the required number of lanes and each lane has a specific lane width. So as soon as we get the required number of lanes, multiplying that by lane width, we will be finding out the required width of the road over which the vehicles will move or which is called the carriageway width. And as at every time this is connected with speed, so with this concept of traffic flow model and capacity, I think conceptually we have cleared the idea of the capacity with this traffic flow model and capacity we actually focus on the mathematical way of finding out what can be the number of lengths required for a particular speed at which the system is going to be designed and which is known as the design speed thus from traffic flow model and capacity design speed and design number of lanes are estimated so if we move on to this there are actually three major parameters three major parameters of the traffic flow one is the first one is flow or volume which is the number of vehicles which can which actually crosses over a particular roadway section per unit time that is traffic flow is the actual or the planned number which need to cross over a section in unit time this is normally denoted by q the other relevant parameter is the speed which we all know is length per unit time and the third parameter is density density is the at any instant of time the number of vehicles which are present per unit length of the roadway so density is the number per unit length so we actually can consider the length basically as nothing but that of a space measurement so the flow is the count per unit time speed is space per unit time and density is count per unit space so numerically these three parameters flow speed and density are connected by a multiplicative mathematical model as flow is the product of speed and density as flow is the product of speed and density that is we can mark it as q equals to v into k i think this equation you can understand this is very very much similar to a very well known equation of our engineering domain which is q equals to v into a can anyone tell me where you have found this equation q equals to v into a sir it is continuity equation continuity equation exactly uh, what what is the most widely used field where we use it regularly in fluid mechanics in fluid mechanics for what flow of what 
फ्लो ऑफ मास फ्लो ऑफ मास से डिस्चार्ज फ्लो इन ओपन ओपन चैनल और क्लोज चैनल सर ओपन चैनल फ्लो ओपन चैनल फ्लो एग्जैक्टली वेरी गुड वेरी नाइस एक्चुअली this is the most important aspect and if you can understand and realize this part you will understand the major aspect of the trans traffic flow engineering I think i have mentioned transportation engineering has different aspects and one of them is traffic flow engineering one one of the most important one because ultimately everything we do everything we study is for traffic flow only this traffic flow model or traffic flow engineering is exactly analogous to fluid flow model or fluid flow engineering with the same models are being followed and if same models are being followed then physically also there should have been certain simile although apparently it seems there are not at all such simile because what happens in a fluid flow the very basic idea of the fluid flow is in an open channel a motion of the fluid is the resultant of if we consider this right side figure of the slide a motion of the fluid can be considered as a continuous collision effect between the fluid particles as well as with the fluid particle and the boundary but obviously in a traffic system there cannot be a collision between two vehicles or between a vehicle and the boundary so this is a major deviation from a normal case of a fluid flow logic or fluid flow algorithm but this is what we need to understand now oh, coming back to this left hand figure what we need to understand very importantly is this may not be exactly look wise similar but logically similar if we consider this bold red marked portion as one vehicle and this black black hollow black marked portion as another vehicle and this line and this line as the lane boundary this lane boundary may be physically present as barriers may be logically present as markers only then in real time traffic flow movement obviously this vehicle never collides with this vehicle or this vehicle never collides with this boundary or that boundary for its movement then how these two can be connected the way is although visually a vehicle looks like a mass covering this amount of the space but logically it is not so logically a vehicle is a mass which covers a larger space than its real time mass occupancy this red bold space is its mass occupancy the rest is its logical coverage every vehicle during its motion need to maintain or always maintain or must have to maintain a frontal gap along with its forwarding vehicle without this gap this vehicle is not a complete system so this vehicle does not have a length only up to this this is the true physical length of the vehicle but a length from this point to this point is the logical space occupancy of the vehicle and this gap is a direct function of the speed we increase the speed this gap will be increased we decrease the speed this gap will be decreased and when it is a zero speed that is when two vehicles are stationary then they can at least theoretically remain stationary 
without keeping any gap between them or being in a point of collision without creating any hazard. As soon as they are moving, they have to introduce a logical space in between two successive vehicles. And this logical space is being considered as part of the space requirement of the rear vehicle. Similarly, all vehicles require a certain space on its edges so as to remain safe from the surroundings, either from the edge of the road or from the edge of the other vehicle. So actually a vehicle, although physically has a shape and size like this bold red cover, but in logically a vehicle can be considered as an object with this grayish shade portion. Thus all vehicles are like this and the vehicles move uh, with continuous collision of their logical spaces. Just like the water particles move with continuous collision of their molecules, here also the vehicles move as a stream with continuous collision of their logical space, both with the surrounding vehicles as well as with the surrounding boundaries. And this is how the movement of the traffic is simulated to match exactly with the movement of the vehicles and with the movement of the fluids in case of a open channel. So a traffic stream movement is connected with individual vehicle movement by this logical extended space concept and thus in turn it is a direct replica of the open channel fluid movement and thus the basic relationship is that flow is a product of space and speed. Here the in fluid flow we consider the space as the area and in case of the traffic flow we consider this as the space parameter as the number of vehicles per unit length. So this is the very fundamental and the most important parameter for the traffic flow model. Now in a traffic flow model, there are certain aspects, certain aspects like flow and capacity. First of all, this flow and capacity both are traffic volume, that is number of vehicles per unit time. And the difference is capacity is the ability, that is the maximum number of vehicles that a traffic lane can accommodate per unit time. And flow is the required volume that is the number of vehicles that move across a lane or has a desire to move across a lane per unit time. As long as the flow is less than capacity, there only one lane will be sufficient. When the flow becomes more than the capacity, then obviously the vehicles cannot be accommodated within one lane and in turn we have to introduce as many number of lanes so that average vehicles or average flow per unit lane becomes less than the capacity. It's just like the example we are given. If we have 700 milliliter of water to fill in, in 500 milliliter bottles, that is the capacity being 500 and the flow or the requirement being 700, then we need two bottles. And as soon as we have two bottles, on an average, every bottle can take 350 milliliter and the whole purpose will be served. It may be that one bottle takes 400 milliliter, another 300 milliliter. That is a separate story, but both will take less than their capacity. 
without compromising on any desire and that's why we introduce additional number of bottles in case of traffic additional number of lanes and thus our objective is considering this flow and capacity finding the number of lanes this flow which is the desire that is how many for how many vehicles are road to be designed these are actually being determined from traffic surveys which we will consider in detail in our transportation two part as the second half of the traffic engineering which is the transportation planning and management segment so here our focus will be mainly on capacity and then to get the number of lanes from a fixed flow now in order to find out the capacity let us try to find out the mathematical relationships between the three parameters that we have mentioned that is the q v and k now the thing is this flow is a product of speed and density and none of them is constant for a stream so basically flow varies with the speed flow varies with the density but actually the speed and density are also connected because density means the number of vehicles per unit space suppose there is 1 km of the road so if we have only one vehicle in this 1 km then and consider there is no other vehicle in the whole system then this vehicle can move at its own will remaining within the safety standard definitely and it is free to move on free to stop change its lanes and all such thing as soon as you introduce a second vehicle some restrictions are introduced because these two vehicles will have some interaction among themselves and movement of one will be influenced by the movement of other more and more vehicle we introduce and the density does started becoming more and more as density being the number per unit length or per unit space <coughs> so as density started increasing so obviously the gap between the vehicle started decreasing so one thing is very obvious what will be impacted is the speed and the speed will go get decreased and thus the speed and density are inversely related increase in one reduces the other there are a different kind of models existing for our starting of this whole domain of transportation engineering for the sake of our mathematical models and numerical problem solutions and design we consider the simplest among all types of relationship consider a linear speed density model that is as the density changes or as the density increases the speed increase decreases linearly obviously there is no such hard and fast rule it changes and there are various aspects or many of the traffic characteristics that we have studied influence in this changing pattern and one of the major parameter is the behavior of the users and as we have mentioned the psychology of the users has a huge role to play and all has a role but for our purpose for the time being or for logical understanding we assume a linear speed density relationship and this speed density relationship we can express it by a curve like this where at a party as the density increases the speed decreases and there will be a particular density that is with increase with increase in the density with increase in the density actually the speed gets decreased from this point to this point and there is a particular density 
corresponding to the zero speed that is when the vehicles are not moving at all and when the vehicles are not moving at all they do not need to keep any gap in between them and if they do not provide any gap in between them then obviously we can have the maximum number of vehicles that can be accommodated and this maximum number of vehicle that can be accommodated and the corresponding density is called the maximum density or k max k is the normal term for the density this is also called the jam density and now if we go back to our this figure so basically the space occupied by a vehicle is equal to this gray shaded area and for this gray shaded area there are basically two parts one part is the actual length of the vehicle that is this much and this we can consider by l and the other part is the spacing is the clearance of the gap and this we can term as clearance or c thus for a vehicle the total space required we can denote this total space required as s that is from this point to this point the total space required is considered as the s or the spacing so the total space required by a vehicle which is also called a space headway so this is mathematically or space headway or spacing mathematically this is the sum total of length plus clearance now length of a vehicle is always greater than 0 the clearance it can be greater or equal to 0 at the zero speed the clearance can be 0 as the speed increases the clearance also increases so what happens as the speed increases the clearance increases so as the speed increases the spacing increases and as the speed increases the density decreases so as the spacing increases the density decreases and thus the density and the spacing can be expressed by the term k is the reverse of the spacing or space headway and the minimum value of the spacing will be attained when either of this length or the clearance or both will be minimum since the length will always be non-zero and clearance can be zero but both are non-negative so the minimum spacing will achieve when the clearance is zero that is the spacing is equal to the length and at the minimum spacing the density will be maximum and that will be the jam density which is one upon the length so if the characteristics of the vehicles on a road can be known and if their length or average length of the vehicles if the average length of the vehicles are known then inverse of the average length will be the jam density and for a speed density model this is one of the boundary condition that at jam density the speed will be zero now finding out the average length of a stream or a roadway is not so easy unless the roadway supports homogeneous type of vehicle which is not at all a regular phenomena so what actually happened is normally this length is being calculated as the weighted average of the length of different type of vehicles when the frequency of the vehicles are considered as the weight factor that is hypothetically if we assume a case suppose a particular road contains 80 percent of the vehicles 
with 4 meter length and 20% of the vehicles with 5 meter length so in that case the average length of the vehicle will be 4 multiplied by 0 0.8 plus 5 multiplied by 0 0.2 as the sum total of these weight factors are 1. So forgetting about that, it comes out to be 4.2 meter. So this is how the average length of the vehicles of a particular stream are determined. So for this, we need to know the count of the vehicles of different category, that is how many vehicles of which category move along that road and what are the characteristics of each category of the vehicles. All these are being measured again in the part of traffic survey. Now, so in order to solve this model, as we have assumed a linear model, so a linear model can be solved with two boundary conditions and one of the boundary condition is this point that is this k equal to 0 for v equal sorry k equals to jam density for v equals to 0 and as the vehicles are not moving at that point so the flow which is the number of vehicles crossing a section per unit time this flow also becomes 0 in that particular situation that is at the jam density condition the density is maximum both the speed and the density both the speed and the flow is zero the other end of the boundary is when k equals to zero now k equals to zero is obviously not a very practical thing because if there are at all any one vehicle in the system then k cannot be 0. So k equals to 0 is a hypothetical situation that is if the number of vehicles started reducing and it reduces to such that it almost tends to 0 then the speed will reach almost to its maximum possible value where the drivers or the users have absolute freedom. And this speed, which is a theoretical one corresponding to a zero density, is called the mean free speed. If we focus on the actual curve of the speed density, even if it is linear, from jam density it decreases, and as it approaches the density zero axis or the speed axis, it finally becomes almost asymptotically increasing to the speed and they, it never touches with this axis as the situation of k equals to 0 never happens. If k equals to 0 then there is no vehicle at all in the system and <coughs> mathematically what is being done a lot of such experiments are conducted. <coughs> A lot of observations are being done on the field of different vehicles at for a stream at different time when they are at different density the stream and the uh, speed of the stream and those points are being marked as scatter points and the best fit line is being fitted through those scatter points and that best fit line where it cuts the k equal to 0 that is speed axis this speed is considered as the mean free speed again this is outcome of that traffic survey part and with this outcome we get the second boundary condition that is k equals to 0 where v is the mean free speed or vfs they are also q is zero so because there is k equals to zero means there is no vehicle at all so if there is no vehicle there is no flow so q equals to zero 
this is such a situation that we can consider there is a vehicle which moves at such a speed that it is absolutely non measurable so we cannot measure the flow we cannot measure the density and thus what happens this k value does ranges in between jam density and zero whereas the speed ranges between zero and mean free speed but q which is a product of v and k so when v equals to zero q is zero when k equals to zero q is zero in between the q follows a parabolic curve a parabolic curve with both speed and density that is a flow speed curve is also parabolic a flow density curve is also parabolic where the maximum of that occurs at half of the density half of the maximum density and half of the maximum free speed which is exactly midway of this speed density curve where the maximum flow occurs that this occurs at the point kj by 2 and vfs by 2 and this will happen only if the whole system is perfectly theoretical that is there is no external influence all the vehicles move only on their own will it is only the space requirement of each of the vehicles that influence the movement pattern that is when all such things are being maintained then only we can consider that the maximum flow occurs at exactly the middlemost point of maximum speed and maximum density that also when speed density follows a linear pattern and middlemost point of maximum speed means at vfs by 2 middlemost point at jam density means at kj by 2 and since flow is the product of speed and density so at this middle point the density is kj by 2 the speed is vfs by 2 say their product vfs by k into kj by 4 is considered as the maximum flow and that is the capacity under the ideal condition now what happens in a real time scenario this ideal condition never happens and thus there are different type of negative influencing parameters on the road which influences the flow para pattern or the flow parameter and that continuously influences the speed density relationship and if the speed density relationship continuously gets influenced so the speed capacity and or density capacity will also gets influenced and thus the idea that the maximum density occurs exactly at the midway of speed density condition or exactly at the midway if the speed is vfs by 2 density will be kj by 2 these conditions never remain as it is and thus the capacity gets influenced and from the theoretical condition the capacity gets changed and we get different types of capacities and we define different types of capacities as practical capacity possible capacity like this and these idea and thus for actual design purpose the design codes suggested not to use the theoretical capacity value because the theoretical capacity will can never be obtained on the field and so if the design is being done with the theoretical capacity the system will fail so there are the indian codes IRC 106 and IRC 64 these codes have given certain governing guideline regarding the capacity values 
which can be achievable on the ground because on the ground there can be different negative aspects some of the negative aspects cannot be taken care of some of the negative aspects can be taken care of so considering those negative aspects which can be taken care of and providing their solution through traffic planning or traffic management or traffic law enforcement the capacity can be brought as close as possible to the theoretical value and this is considered as the design capacity and with the basic idea that flow pal lane should always be less than the capacity thus the <coughs> number of lane is obtained as the integral higher or <coughs> of the ratio <coughs> sorry of the ratio design flow to capacity this design flow to capacity ratio the higher integer of this flow to capacity ratio will be the design number of lane thus if a, for a particular road if the design flow or the target flow suppose is 5000 passenger car equivalent i think we have discussed what pcu is and these terms if we consider this 5000 pcu per hour if we consider this as the uh, capacity uh, the design flow and if the capacity of the road is <coughs> Uh, 3000 PCU per hour per lane that means in every lane there we can accommodate or maximum of 3000 vehicles so to accommodate 5000 vehicles we need 5000 divided by 3000 that is 1.67 number of lanes the lanes cannot be any fraction and the fractional lane will not serve the purpose also in order to provide enough space to accommodate the width of a vehicle we require a lane it is of no use to provide 0.25 width of a lane and thus we, for that we so we should provide two number of lanes and this is how the lane is being designed from the capacity and for this particular case a design speed is being taken from the desire of the road users obtained through the traffic survey again that as we have mentioned which in detail we will consider in our next semester courses and as we have mentioned our codes which are being obtained from one of the major guideline which is the highway capacity manual which was originally introduced in 1950 and later grossly modified in 1986 this highway capacity manual is the mother guidebook for all traffic related issues for those countries which follow uk method of driving or left hand drive method that is where the vehicles drive along left hand side of the road the other option is the right hand drive method which is the u.s school where the vehicles drive along right hand side of road and globally the their common guideline is obtained from the guideline of asho or american association of state highways organizations now as we follow hcm now in hcm 1980 it defined three type of capacities one is basic capacity which is the capacity under perfect theoretical condition which we have already seen and we know how to calculate it it will be vfx into kj by 4 and the other extreme of this is the possible capacity possible capacity is what is actually possible on the road considering all the existing roadway and traffic conditions all conditions some of which may be legal some of which may be illegal some of which may be planned some of which may be unplanned 
some of which may be practiced, some of which may be random. That is taking all such issues. What can be the actual capacity on the road is called as the possible capacity. And this is of the minimum value. So if we consider this basic capacity as this as the maximum value, so the required number of lane in that case would have been minimum. If we consider possible capacity, which has minimum value, then the required number of lane numerically will be the maximum. So if we design taking possible capacity, we will always be on the safer side because we are providing maximum number of lanes considering minimum capacity. And if we take basic capacity, we will might be on the unsafe side as we are providing minimum uh, maximum considering maximum capacity and providing minimum number of lane. So obviously we can go for possible capacity, but that will actually make the whole solution very much uneconomic. So the same HCM 1950 and the same guideline of our country, the corresponding IRC codes define something in between as practical capacity or the design capacity, which consider that this is the possible capacity, that is the capacity under existing roadway and traffic condition. That is, in general, capacity is defined as maximum number of vehicles that can safely move along a roadway per lane per unit time. When it is under perfect theoretical condition, it is termed basic capacity. When it is under existing roadway and traffic condition, it is considered possible capacity. And when it is under existing roadway and traffic condition, but the condition is not such to create unnecessary delay. That is, here comes again a decision making. That is, there are different negative elements which will cause us delay to the journey. So let us identify which can be termed as unnecessary and let us remove them. Only if that can be removed, then the capacity can be enhanced from possible towards basic to a relatively higher value as practical. And that is considered as the design capacity. Now, this is the whole concept in 1950. In 1986, another important thing, uh, important milestone in the traffic engineering domain. The transportation sector is redefined from an engineering sector to a service sector. And with this redefinition, it introduced a concept as serviceability, which is acceptance by the user. Till then, the idea was acceptance on the basis of safety acceptance on the basis of safety always remains we cannot provide number of lanes less than that required by considering design capacity but that till 1986 uh, globally in our country it has introduced very late just recently, less than a decade ago, this is actually being implemented. We are a little bit slow in this domain. Essential, fulfilling essential condition is mandate. But with this new development of transportation being service sector, merely fulfilling the essential condition will not complete a design. And to complete a design, it must have to be accepted by the user also. What does we mean by accepted by the user? Let us consider the two cases. Let us consider that the capacity of a road of a section is 1000 PCU per hour per lane. And suppose there is one road through which the flow is 900 PCU per hour and another section at which the flow is 200 PCU per hour. Now, any one of you, can you just tell me if you will be the user 
which section you will prefer mathematically in both section flow is less than the capacity so only one lane will be sufficient now if you have given a choice that in one of the road a road can accommodate 1000 vehicles 200 is moving there and another can accommodate 1000 vehicle 900 is moving there if both reach to your destination which one you will prefer sir 200 one the 200 one any reason for that Because so, simply so traffic one uh, that's one less traffic yes sir. i think so basically this actually gives us a comfort is it not because when the capacity is 1000 pcu that means it has taken everything into aspect that is the speed at which you are driving the speed at which the road is designed it can accommodate 1000 but this actually gives us a more comfort uh, ease of comfort in our mind so to the users if we rate the two roads this road the second option will have a higher rating this is very obvious and thus for the users they basically focus on two things that is uh, it should have a low flow capacity ratio if it can have a low flow capacity ratio but only a low flow capacity ratio will not be good enough suppose the road has a low flow capacity ratio but the road condition is such that you are forced to drive at a very slow speed will you then prefer it I think we'll, nobody will then prefer it if even with a low flow capacity ratio, vehicles are forced to drive at a slow speed. So they actually prefer simultaneously this condition, low flow capacity ratio, high speed and high speed means it must have to be low density. And at the same time, they do not prefer low speed, high density condition. So what happened from this 1986 onward, a new term has been introduced known as level of service because it is the service that now governs the design. And so the definitions has changed a little bit. The possible capacity, this has actually been dropped completely this term possible this is considered to be as the capacity and the for the basic capacity this term basic has been dropped in 1986 it is renamed as capacity under ideal condition and this design capacity this design capacity is being kept as it is along with that introduction of the concept of level of service here in level of service a specific curve is being conceptualized by the uk road research lab which is called level of service curve which is a curve between speed and flow capacity ratio mainly as the speed versus flow we already have mentioned this follows a parabolic part with when speed is zero the flow is zero so flow capacity ratio is also zero and when speed is maximum then also flow is zero so the flow capacity ratio there also is zero in between the flow capacity ratio increases reaching to its maximum at one which normally happens at a speed same as the half of the mean free speed or it may be a little bit less than half of the mean free speed if there are other influencing factors on the road reducing the capacity. We already have seen if there is no other factor that influence the capacity, then 
the maximum one occurs exactly at half of the mean free speed and first of all it has been found that on the basis of flow capacity it can be categorized into different segment low moderately low moderate moderately high high very high like this and it has been rated rated with the higher rating as the flow capacity ratio is low but at the same time the same flow capacity ratio being a parabolic curve can be attained at two level of speed that is suppose a particular flow capacity ratio of this much this can be attained this particular flow capacity ratio this can be attained at this particular speed as well as this particular speed when the speed is high density is low and the product of speed and density will be this value when the speed is low density is very high that is too many number of vehicles there going very slowly so the flow is also low they 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 not only go slow they actually their desire is also not there the type of the vehicles are such that they actually move slow suppose there are too many number of vehicles but all are slow moving vehicles so as soon as they are all, they all are slow moving vehicles so their average speed will fall down density will increase as speed speed goes down density goes up <coughs> as these two are inversely connected and so the same flow capacity can be attained at two point but for the users it is always the higher portion of the curve that is on the upper speed domain that is acceptable the lower speed domain is always unacceptable so in this level of service curve first of all the bottom of half of the curve is provided a level of service or los if <coughs> sorry f stands for failure that is no design in the serviceability concept can be done so that the speed will be below that so this gives the first guideline of a concept of design speed that is design speed can only be in between the stop up of the speed curve design speed cannot go on this bottom half of the speed curve and then on this top half on the basis of flow capacity ratio it is being divided into into five groups level of service a with the lowest flow capacity and the highest possible speed so in order to attain the level of service a the flow capacity ratio must have to be within this domain is the flow capacity ratio must have to be in between this and the speed must have to be in between this that is only if the design speed is in between this zone almost close to mean free speed and the number of lane being such that the flow capacity ratio lies within this that is this is the maximum permissible flow capacity ratio per lane then this can be considered attaining level of service a and this is the absolute freedom level of service the best possible level of service but what happens how we can achieve this in order to achieve this we must have to capacity is a fixed term per lane so how we can reduce flow capacity ratio per lane we must have to reduce flow per lane so how we can reduce flow per lane 
flow is also a fixed term because what we have to do we have to reduce the flow to capacity ratio this is what we have to reduce how to lower down this flow to capacity capacity is constant so the only thing is the we have to lower down flow per lane now flow is the number of vehicles that desires or intends to move through that section so obviously we cannot ask that this num vehicles will not move this can be one of the solution you might have heard uh, a couple of years ago uh, our state of delhi has given a solution odd number of odd registration number even registration number on alternate days this is actually a tried solution from the city of singapore tried but almost failed solution so this is a forceful solution when we are actually reducing the flow by forcibly stopping the movement of the vehicle which is obviously not a desirable one our aim is to give maximum comfort to the users so how we can do it the only solution is increase the lane so only if we can increase the lane to such high that flow becomes such low that is we increase the lane to such high that this flow per lane becomes so low that in turn flow capacity ratio is low this will give us the scope to be in the higher level if we cannot increase the lane to that much of high then we can think of targeting the next level where we can reduce the design speed also to a little bit little bit more part that is in that case the design speed can be anywhere in between here to there and the level of service uh, the flow of flow capacity ratio can be anywhere in between here to there now in order to achieve the level of service since the target of the users are both that is low flow capacity and high speed so if both the two things can be achieved for the entire road then only a road can be considered to attain a particular level of service so in the design how we have to do it first of all this is a rough sketch so you might think that everything is without values don't worry everything is not without values all these boundaries are prefixed that is what can be the maximum flow capacity ratio for los a this maximum value is prefix and what is the minimum speed in term of mean free speed because this is mean free speed what is the minimum sp mean sp design speed in term of mean free speed for level of service a these are being prefixed by the standards of each country hcm 1950 have this prefixed ones in our country on the basis of this hcm 1950 corresponding irc code says this prefixed guidelines i am not showing you the values here we will see we, i will share a numerical with you and there are the values you will get so in the for design so when from this point we will move on to the direct design part so what happens there are two ways if we follow the level of service principle or if we do not follow the level of service principle if we do not follow the level of service principle it is a simpler one we have no control on the design speed we have to choose a design speed on the basis of basically demand of the users more the speed that more number of users like to ply on that is considered as the design speed and we determine the number of lengths in such a way that the total flow average flow per lane is always less than capacity just if it is less than capacity it will be good enough how much less there is nothing for that numerically we have the flow value we have the capacity value we divide flow with the capacity turn it into higher integer that will be the number of lane now if we consider the level of service part then we first have to fix what level of service should be achieved for different category of the roads starting from expressway to a local street different level of services are fixed this is how actually the importance is defined expressways are designed for the best level of service level of service a or b whereas state highways might be b or c like this 
and so it is first fixed. So when this is being fixed, thus the minimum value of the design speed is fixed. So it has to be ensured that all geometric components should be designed so as it is safe for traveling with that particular design speed, which will be minimum design speed corresponding to that level of service boundary. That is, if this is suppose design level of service is V, suppose just for example, suppose this boundary flow capacity ratio, suppose this is 0.25. Suppose this boundary design speed, suppose this is 80% of VFS, that is mean free speed. So from traffic survey data, we get the VFS, calculate 80% of that. That should be the design speed. No speed below that can be considered. Every geometric feature should be designed safe against this speed. If they can be safe against higher speed, it is more better. But this is what can be the limiting speed, limiting design speed. And with this flow capacity ratio, so we have a particular design flow. Suppose our design flow is, suppose the design flow is 5000 PCU per hour. Suppose the capacity is 3000. So the number of lane should be such that average flow per lane, that is if number of lane is n, then average flow per lane is 5000 by n. So this flow per lane, when this is ratioed against the capacity, this should be less than or equal to this limiting value of 0 0.35. This is how the design is being done. That is flow by number of lane ratio to capacity should be le less than or equal to the boundary LOS value. This is exactly how design is to be done and flow is a known parameter. Capacity, boundary LOS value, these are standardized parameters. So the only unknown remains here is the number of lane n. Although at present we might think that this flow or capacity, they are also unknown, but actually they are not unknown because there are methodologies of finding out the flow on the basis of the actual uh, traffic demand data. These are other part of the story, which part of that we will discuss in our transportation two courses. Part of that we even can discuss for those who will have transportation as their elective paper. So this is basically with this we fix up the two major parameters for our geometric design from where actually the design design of geometric component starts that is design speed i repeat again if it is uh, not level of service uh, common capacity method of design we do not fix design speed we fix design speed in level of service and then number of lane once the number of lane is fixed Considering PAL lane width, which is in our country standardized as 3.5 meter. So number of lane multiplied by 3.5 meter will be the basic carriageway width. From there, the entire geometry or the this planning layout starts. So this design speed, this is being obtained only for level of service design. And number of lane is obtained level of service and capacity method for both. If we go for capacity method, normally this is not being done. This is not part of the code also. But as we have said, we have we are very, very recently have changed from capacity method to level of service. So there are still some places where this is being followed. There the design speed is normally being chosen in thumb rule as normal practice for similar kind of loads. So this is